Greetings comrades, today we're going to speak about a topic that is very dear to me, and that is automation. And specifically, it is automation and its relation to universal basic income, as well as a critique of that very, uh, well it's not even a policy, it's a... It's an idea that people have been spouting a lot more recently than I've ever really seen it spouted before, especially in the last few years and last couple of months in particular. So, where to begin? Automation, at its core, is machinery which is not only capable of multiplying the productiveness of a person, uh, you know, you have a a weaver, and they have a a large and productive loom with which to make cloth. They are much more capable of producing cloth for the same amount of uh, expended energy and time than if they had simply hand weaved it. Yet the production is still wholly dependent on the weaver putting in that effort, putting in that labor, and getting out their product. Automation is different because you have labor being performed which is not necessarily dependent upon any human. A classic example of this would be the enormous mechanical arms that uh, construct cars individually. Uh, as to say, they uh, they place the individual parts on an assembly line, and by the end of it, they've constructed a car, something which used to be only able to be done by a bunch of workers working on that assembly line. Now, as it stands, even then, the machines are not entirely automated, obviously. They require supervision, because if they do break down, then you have to be able to notice that, you have to be able to stop production so that things don't get clogged up, and have it repaired by a technician. So in that regard, we don't actually have whole automation yet, Yet, what we do have is a drastic reduction in the amount of labor that people need to expend in order to produce these products, and simultaneously a drastic reduction in the amount of jobs that can be provided. Because why would you have a person working on these assembly lines when you could have machines which only really cost energy, and for, let's say, a dozen machines, you replace, oh, at least 50 workers, maybe, and then you only have to hire a handful of engineers to supervise it. Then you, you end up walking out as a much richer capitalist than you were previously. And it's starting to get different now. And the way it's getting different is that the amount of jobs that can be automated is drastically increasing. And for many, I'm sure you're aware that self-driving cars are becoming a thing. Vehicles which are able to pilot their own uh, way to the destination without needing a human driver. That alone is going to be a drastic cut to the amount of employment that is possible. Uh, I, if I'm wrong, I believe that transportation in one form or another is actually the single largest job in the United States. So, at least for my country, it would be a huge blow. It would be millions upon millions of job loss, and it expands from there. You have you have uh, machines, or not really machines even, 
but programs which are capable of, say, cataloging all sorts of information completely accurately in order to, uh, well, for one, you can have it so that they know exactly what drugs have side effects, what drugs have interactions with one another, and so you can have a so-called doctor bot which is able to prescribe specific medication to specific patients without ever needing a doctor be present to prescribe that. And so it's not even just menial labor that's being replaced, but a very high-end job, the white-collar workers. And there's also, of course, uh, text writing robots, software bots, all that. And by the end of the day, projections are stating that more than half of the jobs that we have in the world could be automated. And I want you to just kind of imagine that right now. It's probably not going to be a overnight process. It's going to take decades to even get the technology available, and it's going to take several decades more in order to implement, but half of the population just unable to work because the the job market just isn't there. And that is a problem which many people agree is going to happen, but one of the ways they seek to combat this problem is by implementing what is known as the Universal Basic Income, or UBI. Now, it's a pretty simple system, I think, and it goes something like this. You have your corporations, they have their workforce automated, so there's no humans there except for maybe a few managers, uh, maybe a couple of technicians. It could even get to the point where we have robots capable of repairing other robots. So who knows, but we're not quite there yet. So let's say that a majority, though, go unemployed. How do you solve that? What do you do? The solution in the eyes of the UBI is that you tax the businesses and corporations heavily that are using automated labor and collect that and then distribute it to everybody in the country, every citizen, and you have this basic income that everybody has. And on the surface, it sounds pretty good. And perhaps to anyone listening to this, it, it probably doesn't sound good because of how bad the mic quality is, but the idea should sound pretty good. You have everybody getting a basic income that can help alleviate them, keep them from extreme poverty at the very least. But the problem is that it is a system which, by its own nature, is unsustainable. And what it really comes down to is this. How are you going to get the money to pay for the system? And I know that immediately, many might think, uh, isn't that the same argument that right-wingers use when they try to decry a sort of social program? And you would be correct. That is, in fact, what right-wingers say in order to say that we can't afford universal uh, health care, we can't afford to have so many unemployment benefits, we can't afford this, that, and the other thing. And in this regard, though, it's completely justified because you do have to look at how are you going to get the money. Because this is a money-based system. You get money from the corporations, and you have that collected by the government through taxes, and you give that to the citizens, and the idea is that they use that money in order to buy the goods from the corporations 
and it just goes in this happy little cycle forever, and gradually, the corporations make more money because they've upgraded their machinery and they've become more productive, and so more people are going to have bigger and bigger uh, incomes because of the UBI, and so they're able to buy even more products. Now, the problem with this is rather simple. You're essentially stating that you're going to be taking more money from the corporation than the corporation is going to get from the consumer because there's no way you can have that other one. Or, or actually, wait, no. I, I have that backwards. What it's trying to say is that somehow you're going to have the consumers pay more money to the corporations than the corporations pay in taxes, which is the sole income that the citizens have. And if if you really think about that, it's just impossible. You would have to have a 100% tax on all profits just to break even, at the very least, when you collect the money and distribute it to the citizenry, because otherwise, what are you even taking? And if it's anything but that, then what you have is that the profits that the businesses get is just going to steadily be decreasing because they're not putting in the money into the government what the government needs in order to pay the citizens what the citizens need in order to pay the corporations so they can stay solvent they can stay in the black they can have their profits and so what's going to end up happening is that if you have this system it will pretty quickly implode and the only way to avoid this would be if the corporations were able to get their money from outside the country right you would have to you'd have to produce enough that the corporations export to other countries and take their money in order to actually have profits and still be able to pay money to the government in order to pay the citizens, in order to pay back into the corporations. But that's just kind of passing the bill to somebody else, and if automation is going to bring uh, worldwide change, as it most likely will, then you're not going to have a situation where you really have a foreign market, which is going to be capable of uh, propping up your corporations in this cycle which just cannot exist for an indefinite amount of time. And this is true to a larger extent, capitalism obviously. But it's especially true with this. It's rather idiotic if you go just beneath the surface. And that's just from a very technical perspective of quite literally how do you have this cycle where the corporations are getting more money than they're paying in with the taxes if the only income they're getting are the taxes they pay indirectly but even if we don't go with that if we don't go into how it's unsustainable and how they would need to go to foreign markets let's just assume that this one country uh, say the United States has a fully automated economy and they just export all their goods to other countries and they keep the system afloat. Why exactly are the capitalists who own everything, these mega corporations that do not require the poor any longer because the proletariat? have effectively lost their bargaining tool, and that bargaining tool being that the capitalist is reliant on their worker. Right? You, you can't have your business as it stands without having your workers 
lurking away and producing surplus value which you take it's just not possible but with automation you sever that die you make it so that the capitalist no longer requires the worker in order to get their product and so to me what's most likely going to happen is you have the capitalist uh, with this cutoff relationship where they're no longer dependent on the working class and they just sort of say fuck it and they just refuse to pay taxes and what is the government going to do I mean I guess you could have the military but what's to say that these mega corporations would literally control everything wouldn't just offer deals to the uh, the government and to the military in order to safeguard the loyalty and sort of just genocide the majority of people because they can't do anything else they they can't fight against it they have nothing to really offer the capitalists anymore and just sort of live in a small utopia of capitalism from then on a resource-based economy most likely if this sounds crazy it's probably because i'm rambling with no script but uh yeah i think the closing thought would be this i am 100 percent in favor of automation I am definitely a technophile. I think the improving productive forces is one of the things we absolutely need to do in order to have a communist society, a a society which, in all honesty, I envision as being rather utopian. But that's that's probably another video for another day. The the thing is that under the system of capitalism where I've explained now that if automation gets bad enough then capitalists do not need workers whatsoever and they can just sort of sweep them under the rug what we need to do in my opinion as communists is just reject automation at every level and try to make it so that this doesn't happen because if it does then again we're going to lose every bit of bargaining power that we have because it's sad but we're no longer going to be necessary and that's just a simple fact so hopefully hopefully somebody got some insight from this and some enjoyment if I get this like the hell, then oh well. I'll accept that because this was just 19 minutes of me talking a bunch of shit. And I didn't quote anything. This was all just an opinion piece. Now, there are supplementary videos, which I would say are made by much more knowledgeable people. And much more... Uh... I, yeah, knowledgeable, intelligent people that I consider to be on a whole different level than me in terms of understanding of Marxism and also just generally being able to put their thoughts forward in a coherent way without just rambling like a like a like an idiot really. So I'll link some of those in the in the description here, in particular. Uh, Comrade Hakim's video on automation. It's short, but it's probably a lot sweeter than this video. Uh, Bad Mouse Productions also made a great little video, or not even a little video, a video I think about as long as this one, where he talks about universal basic income. And otherwise, I think maybe CCP Gray's video on how humans need not apply and Korskazart or whatever it is where they also talk about how 
automation is going to be changing the world. So, uh, ho hopefully you enjoyed, comrades. G goodbye.